2017, an online music label known as Geometric Lullaby would create a thread on a forum in efforts to find new artists for their label. The label's motto, a collection of songs about life and death. They received a solid amount of responses, but one response in particular stood out. It was an email from an unknown producer who went by the name Begotten. What was in this email would not only change the label forever, but would introduce an entire online music scene to a series of six album releases shrouded in mystery and tragedy. All of this, paired with the chilling events we will learn about today, provides us with the ultimate case to solve. Just who is Begotten? So our story today will focus on two people and the limited exchanges they've had. Dennis, the label owner of Geometric Lullaby, and obviously the artist known as Begotten. As mentioned earlier, in 2017, Dennis would create a thread online in search of new artists for his label. A bizarre email from someone claiming to be from Azerbaijan, a small country just north of Iran, caught the eye of Dennis, the amount of material, and what this email consisted of was quite shocking. Upon opening the email, Dennis noticed that the artists had already set up their own Bandcamp page with all of the covers and album names, each, however, without any of the actual music. The first reason this all caught the eye of Dennis was that he was sent six full albums to download in the email, all at once, with each release set to go live on Halloween for each year going forward until 2022 on Bandcamp. So the music wasn't on Bandcamp, but he got everything all sent in one shot in the email for him to listen to. Aside from the music, the email also contained a series of music videos. These videos were eerie, haunting, dreamy, yet intoxicating and beautiful. Dennis says how the artist managed to make these videos so relaxing, all while at the same time putting him on edge, still baffles him to this very day. And lastly, the emails contained blocks of text. What Dennis read from Begotten was so bizarre, he just didn't know what to make of it. Dennis is still unable to understand the meaning of this text or the reason for the Chinese language if they truly are from Azerbaijan. Also included in the email was a series of some of the most heart-wrenching poetry you could ever read paired with music. If you go to the artist's Bandcamp page, you can read each of those poems right now along with the albums and the track titles and the covers and all that Chinese text and a lot of it is pretty heavy. It's pretty tough to read. Uh, they sound like someone who's going through a pretty dark place in their life, and Dennis remembers all of this intriguing him without even hearing any of the albums yet. Being hit with all of this at once, it was finally time for Dennis to download and listen to the actual music that was sent through the email. And aside from the imagery, poetry, mysterious texts, and music videos, Dennis would soon discover a collection of albums unlike any other. The music was dreamy and atmospheric, haunting yet relaxing, eerie, but beautiful all at the same time. But most of all, the music of Begotten was extremely sad. Dennis found himself listening to every album, all six, front to back twice as soon as he started them. The multiple languages found in the sample selected in the albums tell a dark and depressive story set against the backdrop of unbearable loneliness. Each release varies in mood from romantic-inspired vaporwave flips to darker trap beats and everything else in between. You'll find sample work ranging from crystal clear and sharp as a knife to cloudy and incomprehensible, a smokescreen that suffocates us from the sound alone. Added chords and production techniques all evolve the original samples in such a riveting way with the emotional and worrisome narrative enriched into these songs. Dennis knew he had to be the one to release these albums. After attempting to contact the artist back for over three months, Dennis would finally get a reply. It simply read, Please release, send me address. Dennis immediately compiled everything he needed and sent the first album off for dubbing. Obviously, there was some doubt in all of this. Just who is this person and why are they sitting on six albums of material as well as music videos to go along with them and none of this was on their band camp. Are they really from Azerbaijan? And Dennis wondered if he should be worried about what was being said in the text from these releases. Should he try and get this person help? Or is this all a hoax or a prank? Or is it just, you know, another person making a creepy music alias on Bandcamp? Are these albums an intricate call for help? I just sincerely hope that this person is okay. They have created something unique and have a perspective on things that I can really connect with. 
I feel selfish, but I want more albums and expression from this individual. I hope you all enjoy it as much as I. Dennis's doubts about the location of Begotten would eventually lessen when a mysterious package arrived in his mailbox addressed from, where else, but Azerbaijan. The box contained only 25 copies of a J card for cassettes for the first album known as Life Cycle, each with the word death scribbled on front, and for those who don't know real quick, a J card is the artwork insert placed inside cassette cases. Shortly after this is when we would see these albums begin to gradually emerge to the public online, with the first one released on the label's band page on March 12th, 2018. I want to explore each release with you, going in order from when they were released on Geometric Lullaby and what was going on at that time in the saga of events between Dennis and Begotten. Let us begin. Life Cycle would be the first Begotten album that would see the dark of night on the internet. Music videos were also included in the original email from Begotten for the album's title track, Longing, and for the album's fourth track, Life. These music videos, which contain nothing but low-quality shots of skeletons, were the first of many to emerge on Geometric Lullaby from the series of footage sent over from Begotten in the original email. Every Begotten music video gives off this vibe of decayed VHS, this sort of candle cove aura for those who remember when that whole thing was a craze on the internet. Life Cycle would consist of 10 tracks, a very exciting and animated vapor trap release right out the gates for Begotten, all while still being hazy and lethargic with its wonderful use of textures and uncanny sound effects like the cry of the penguin you race in Super Mario 64 that is missing its baby. Manipulating R&B tracks and moody hip-hop selections that fizzle out into these weird outer body climaxes are simply stunning, and Dennis choosing this as the first begotten release to put out on the label, besides the fact that this was the first release in the chronological timeline provided by Begotten, was the perfect move. Life Cycle is the ultimate entrance into the labyrinth of Begotten's mind. As mentioned earlier, each release was accompanied by text and poetry. Here is what was given from that email sent to Dennis for the first album. If love is a gift, then I am luckier than most. I am showered with more than anyone could hope. Only I cannot accept them with open arms or a smile. I push everyone away from me, never-ending denial. It hurts to exist, it is painful to live. My wrists show the struggle of my emptiness. Just once, I want to express myself right, to be honest to those who deserve so and cry, to bleed my own blood not for me, not my life, but someone who needs it, just once before I die. No more lies. And when I'm gone from this life, I'll look down in surprise. The world keeps on turning, not a cloud in the sky. Without me, it's better and less filled with hate, because now I am gone very deep in a grave. Lay me down and close my eyes. Send me off into the night. Each of these albums, when sent to Dennis, would be tagged as Hushwave on Bandcamp, as well as the title of the second album released from Begotten. Dennis isn't sure if this is the genre they came up with for their sound, but to him, it fits perfectly. Life Cycle would be released on a limited edition ruby red cassette with the first 25 orders containing that J card signed by the artist. Side note, all of the Begotten releases would eventually get re-released by Geometric Lullaby in this insanely sick, beautiful box set collection on October 14th, 2019. There were two variants of the box set, the Ghoul Edition and the Ghost Edition. These were released to the public with an unknown amount and, as expected, sold out ridiculously quickly. When Dennis and I were in talks for this video, he decided to send me one of these box sets he had saved for archiving purposes. I'll be showcasing shots of the box set and cassettes throughout this video as we dive into each release of the Begotten series. This release was a little unsettling to me at first. It takes a different direction than the first album in that it achieves being both more haunting and creepy while at the same time being more beautiful and relaxing. It seems that this release uses all female vocal samples which adds to the airy and ghost-like soundscapes it creates. 
The songs conjure a thick fog of atmosphere and uncertainty, vaporous in its release, like the depiction on the cover. I believe this album is a perfect culmination of what the artist was trying to get across with their tag, Hushwave, that I have never heard before. Up until this release, Dennis attempted countless times to contact Begotten by email, even at the cost of spamming the original email address from which the albums were sent. Besides the initial email, the email asking for Dennis's address, and the package that was sent from Azerbaijan, Dennis had yet to receive any sort of contact or response from Begotten. He began to believe all hope was lost, never contacting this person again. That was until Dennis got a letter in the mail just three weeks before the release of Begotten's second album on the label. The envelope was a beige color with the address, both sending and return, printed from what seemed to be a typewriter. Dennis had no idea who it was from, as the sender's name was typed as BDW, and the address was from somewhere in the middle of Georgia. The address seemed to have some significance, more on this in a little bit. Woozy and distant, the tones explored in Begotten's second album, Hushwave, are enchanting on a whole nother level. Most of the tracks on here are just echoed vocals paired with some stretched out synths or reverb flooded piano keys. Hushwave is Begotten's most minimalistic album in the series, with the most animated track being all the way at the end of the album. That ending track, titled Hidden, shifts the mood into this almost silly Halloween-like jingle that feels a bit uneasy due to the ironically innocent sounding spookiness it has, if that makes any sense. Here was the poem that came with this album. A step too far and I find my way, falling to my knees because the emptiness remains. The lights are so bright, I must close my eyes. I indulge once more as tears fall and she cries. Life is a burden I cannot bear, the barrel of a gun, a blank eyed stare. Razor blade on the mantle, a cup full of pills. I tried everything once, but nothing fulfills. Scars on my arms, self-mutilation perhaps. I could get out of bed now, but rather take another nap. Scared to death of death itself and nowhere to turn. I hope I find solace before it's too late to learn. The album would also come with two music videos in the original email, one for the song Insomnia and one for the song Ghost. The music videos feature these weird masked figures flailing and dancing around, every couple of seconds staring off and seeming to almost lose control of their bodies. For fans of relaxing vaporwave or slushwave even, this release is perfect for you. A big chunk of the begotten tracks we've gotten over the years feel so sensual and like romantic at times, and this album is one of the best examples. It's weird, if you didn't know the backstory of these albums and what went into all of this, some of these releases would probably be super laid back and relaxing, but the problem is, once you know, you know, and you can't avoid the horrific energy surrounding the Begotten releases. Here was the Chinese text provided for this release, when translated, seems to make no sense at all in relation to the album, track titles, artwork, or anything. All right, so back to what's on your mind. What was in that envelope? After Dennis picked up the strange letter, he went back into his apartment and opened it, curious but thinking nothing of it at the time. What ended up being inside sent shivers down his spine. Another envelope. This one, though, badly damaged. The addresses were written in red ink, and the return address, Azerbaijan. Dennis recalls nearly dropping the envelope. He cut it open carefully, his hands were shaking, and inside there was a single card, thicker than paper, that read, you're invited. Below, there looked to be a fingerprint in red ink, or possibly blood. An address was given, again, in Georgia. And at the bottom, scribbled hastily, was the word, begotten. And that was it. No date or details on what he was being invited to. Dennis pulled up Google on his computer and looked up the first address from the outer envelope. That was when he got a little scared. The address was a state mental institution in Georgia. The building looked old and worn down, but According to Google, it was still active. His breathing shortened, and he had to pinch himself, wondering if he was in some sort of horror movie. Next, Dennis looked up the address from the Your Invited card, and nothing came up at all. He searched for a while to no avail, and decided to download Google Earth. He pulled up the exact address, and zoomed in to find a small graveyard with several mausoleums in central Georgia. He looked back at the card, and decided that it was definitely blood, leaving the fingerprint not red ink. At this point, Dennis took a moment to just stop and absorb everything that was happening, and he came up with four conclusions on what could possibly be going on with whoever this begotten person is. 
Possibility number one was just that simply someone was pranking him from the start, and this whole thing was just one big hoax. Another possibility was that someone just started pranking him after the first release. They saw the first story and were now trying to feed off of the mystery. Another idea was Begotten is actually someone living in Georgia, possibly in the mental institution, and they used the Azerbaijan address as a decoy. And lastly, Begotten is actually in Azerbaijan, and is, for some reason, using this person in Georgia as a middleman. They sent them the original letter, which was then forwarded to Dennis in another envelope. Dennis's mind was flooded with questions. Should they have the blood tested for DNA? Should he go to either of the addresses in Georgia, or possibly try and find someone to go there for him since he lived in a completely different state? Whatever his next move was, he knew that he needed to continue the release of these albums. And next up would be Begotten's third album, the one considered to be the darkest of them all. <sighs> On the 23rd of July, 2018, Geometric Lullaby would unleash Begotten's third album on the label, Phantom Psalms. Considered by many to be the darkest and lowest point of Begotten's career, Phantom Psalms spends a majority of its time intoxicating you with these hazy vocals and washy synths, a sound replicating the viscosity of syrup or honey as they slowly pour into your ears like a heavy fog. Phantom Psalms is a hypnotizing pendulum, laughing gas for your ears as they become nothing but vulnerable entrances to Begotten's dastardly deeds. If Begotten's previous album Hush Wave was the light and airy side of the producer, then Phantom Psalms breaks up the crowd as a heavy, slow-moving, hulking counterpart. They are the sounds of a mad person, someone who had gone off the deep end. From the onset of the very first track, my heart felt like it had a weight pressing into it. Like sleep paralysis, I was terrified, and yet my body completely relaxed. From the choice of chords and textures of the samples down to the lyrics, this album hits me probably most hard of all the Begotten releases. Between the releases of Hushwave and Phantom Psalms, Dennis never received any further communication from Begotten, ultimately causing him to have to personally investigate this whole thing, the item, everything he had, just all by himself. And this is what happened. Dennis was eventually able to get in contact with a good friend who lived in the area of the Georgia addresses given to Dennis. His friend actually took the time to find the addresses when Dennis reached out and agreed to scope the area out as the friend became just as interested in the story as Dennis was. When the friend FaceTimed Dennis upon their arrival, Dennis would see that they were in the middle of a beautiful graveyard, stones and trees engulfing the entirety of the background. They informed Dennis that they couldn't find anything that stuck out of the ordinary but Dennis asked them to just look a little bit longer since they had already gone, you know, through all the trouble of going to the graveyard. Something had to be there. This was Dennis's first and possibly last shot at attempting to see if all of this begotten chaos was for real or just a hoax. So he knew he had to take advantage of this opportunity. His friend was alone and the connection of the FaceTime call wasn't the greatest, but they ended up agreeing with Dennis's request. As the sun began to set, they walked along each line of the headstones and showed Dennis everything they could see. Dennis watched from his office, focusing on everything that was coming his way, all while wishing he could have just made the trip himself. As time went by, the friend kept telling Dennis that it was just a simple graveyard and whoever was doing this to him was most likely just messing with him, but Dennis didn't want to believe that. He wanted something to happen. Just keep going. Walk through the whole thing, Dennis recalls telling his friend. And so he did so, with Dennis just wishing he had maybe one more email or anything else at all to help explain the letter and the reasoning behind the odd request for his friend. But he really had nothing to go off of besides what Begotten provided him with, what little that was, and most of all, his own personal curiosity. His friend reached the last row of gravestones and nothing. They found absolutely nothing. But when his friend turned the camera to leave, Dennis spotted something. What was that? Dennis yelled, nearly spilling his drink. I don't see anything, I... No, 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 on the road. Behind Dennis's friend, on the only road path that led into the cemetery was an all-black car. Dennis swore it hadn't been there before and he knew it definitely 
wasn't his friend's vehicle. His friend's face fell from a joking and light expression to fear. He hadn't noticed that car before either. I'm not going anywhere near that his friend told him. But Dennis begged his friend to talk to whoever was in that car, maybe knock on the window or at least wave, but his friend refused. The car didn't move and the windows were tinted so dark that it was impossible to see if anyone was even inside. And of course, by luck, the connection of the FaceTime call started to lose quality and the picture became blurry. The black of the car smudged the screen mixed with the greens and grays, all painting the screen with its bad connection. Next, the audio began to cut in and out. Dennis only got one more flash of something distinguishable before it completely disconnected. He couldn't tell if his friend was smiling or screaming. The still frame left him anxious and worried. Dennis would try calling the friend over the next few days and it seemed that his phone was off or had no connection at all. A week would pass with these attempts by Dennis which only led to a shocking discovery. The number had suddenly been disconnected completely. Any form of contact with the friend seemed hopeless at this point as Dennis would also discover that their Facebook account was deleted as well. Dennis called the police station and gave them all the information he had regarding Begotten, the emails, the addresses, the situation with his friend, and the odd FaceTime call at the graveyard. And then, not three days later, Dennis would get a call back. It was his friend. The friend acted as if nothing had happened at all as if they checked out the graveyard and there was nothing there. Dennis asked about their phone, their time away, not calling Dennis back, why they would suddenly delete their Facebook account out of nowhere. But strangely enough, Dennis's friend would just brush it all off as if Dennis was making all of this up in his head. The friend would tell Dennis that they were just busy and that there must have been a problem with their cell phone provider or service at the graveyard. They also claimed that they had just gotten tired of Facebook so they wanted to delete it all for a while. Yeah, a uh, bit too coincidental as you can probably tell. At this point, Dennis didn't know what to think. He knew the only other place he could get a clue from was the other address he received, the one for the mental institution. He decided to ask his friend to see if somehow, possibly, they would be willing to go check out that spot as well for him, but the friend said no and that they were busy. Dennis's friend hasn't contacted him since that follow-up call nor has begotten, as mentioned earlier. It was the summer of 2018 now, and Dennis decided at this point, it was just best to release the next album in the Begotten series, Phantom Psalms. Maybe making this release go public would draw Begotten's attention back to the label owner who is constantly craving any sort of communication. As the release ran its course online, Dennis would spend his time planning on how to figure out more about the mental institution from which the letter he received was addressed. And of course, he would be waiting, always checking his email, for any contact of any kind by our mysterious friend Begotten. As with all of the previous Begotten albums that were sent to Dennis in that initial email, Phantom Psalms would also contain a poem, block of Chinese text, and music videos from the producer to go with it all. Here was the attached poem. A ghost is being sent to remind, a creature of memory outside of space and time. It returns with a vengeance, won't leave me alone. Just as happiness finds me, my honesty is blown. Another year will I last? A decade or two? Every day is a curse, but somehow I get through. A friend is a pawn, a lover the same. Another piece of my life, just a game. I'll lose soon enough, I'll fall to the rest. Inside I have lost, I've failed the test. I deserve to disappear and be forgotten at last. Please don't touch me, stay away. Here was the Chinese text that was also sent with this album. I'll only be flashing the translation on the screen for a couple of seconds as these blocks of text are usually pretty long, I recommend pausing the video if you are interested in reading the whole thing. For fans of really smooth sample work, all with a creepy undertone and undeniable dark energy, Phantom Psalms is 100% for you. Its hopeless cries present in the vocal samples chosen are harrowing, the piano work feels heavier than the world, the drums decayed and beaten, and when it's all blended together, we are served this smoothie that can put an elephant to sleep. Phantom Psalms is heavy, strong, and emotional, hypnotizing, intoxicating, and alive. This album is most definitely paired best with the nighttime. Happy travels.
There are many records of a particular caliber that seem rather innocent by looking at the track names and maybe the album's title which are enough to pull the wool over your eyes with the kind of music it inhabits. But one of the prime idiosyncrasies we notice first is the artwork, and that alone is enough to alter the way you look at the product. That's probably the best way I could interpret this specific piece from Begotting Jisatsu's catalogue, Happy Anniversary. Having each of the tracks named after a colourful stone may seem enticing at first glance, but the cover that details a 3D and its skeleton laid with the color gradients of green and blue is the very thing that will ultimately change your perception. But the most noteworthy attribute to the record is its ability to deliver this bipolar, simultaneous sensation of feeling relaxed and unsettled. To me, Happy Anniversary sounds like the musical embodiment of feeling isolated and being at peace with your inner thoughts, all the while experiencing this overwhelming existential crisis in hopes that some deus ex machina moments will help turn it all around. Begotten Jisatsu has always had that knack of being able to to give the listener the option to play their music on spin cycle for hours on end or provide them with that one-time experience for their curiosity to remember for as long as they live. If Phantom Psalms was the low point, then Happy Anniversary serves as the manic counterpart. Talk about a 180 from our last departure with Phantom Psalms. Happy Anniversary gives us a mirage of okayness, a soothing cloak that hastily covers up the darkness we had just previously heard. And this is replicated in the artwork as well, by far the most colorful and bright begotten we have gotten yet. Exciting greens and euphoric blues flood the skull upon every listen. Hustle and bustle vapor trap, soothing guitars maxed out in the reverb department, chimes and jingles sounding like you threw a fluffy pillow at a gigantic gem-infused chandelier. Listening to that wonderful sound as each crystal would be knocked into the other. The album also wraps up with four bonus tracks, each these really fun and hyperactive chop jobs with samples bouncing all over the place. Overall, a complete contradiction from the lethargic moods heard previously on Phantom Psalms. Happy Anniversary and its generally warm sample flips and extremely short runtime confuse us from everything we had just heard. Its sporadic and sudden change in tone from the last three albums is just bizarre. What exactly is going on with Begotten? This album feels spastic, nostalgic, dreamy, and surreal. It is all over the place, as if the artist's mind was going a million miles an hour when creating it. The lo-fi beats mixed with the 8-bit and acoustic guitar highlight is just part of the sampling and experimentation this album explores. Here was the poem begotten sent over with this release. What a happy anniversary, what a joyous span of time. What a wonderful evening with your hand in mine. You tell me everything that you want to say. You let it all out, put it all on display. I can't say a word, my mind goes blank. I want to shed tears, say words, give thanks. So happy anniversary from me to you. You'll never understand, they never do. And here was the Chinese text begotten sent with this release. Music videos for the tracks Quartz and Diamond were given for this album. Quartz would feature the reverse footage of gradually burning birthday candles. Instead of everything melting away, we see these candles rise from the grave. Diamond, an extremely short track, it's like 45 seconds long or something, presents sped up footage of a trick-or-treater during Halloween. So before we keep going, just to give you more of a story behind Dennis, the label owner of Geometric Lullaby, he also spends a lot of his time performing in a band. So around 2018, the band would be going on a East Coast tour of the USA. And knowing that, Dennis realized that their route would inevitably lead them right past the address for the mental institution mentioned in the mysterious envelope. But unfortunately, misfortune would strike again. A hurricane would hit at the exact time they were supposed to drive south through Maryland, Virginia, and the Carolinas. Next up on the tour would have been Georgia, the state in which the mental asylum existed. And to make matters even worse, their engine died. Dennis notes it would have costed them several thousands of dollars to fix, and so instead of finally getting to the bottom of the surreal letter from our favorite little mysterious friend begotten, they hightailed it back home to Minneapolis. However, it was around this time that Dennis would finally receive an email from begotten. It was short, and it was simple, but to actually get some communication after such a long silence felt amazing to Dennis. This is what it said. Thank you, I am still alive, 
I am okay for now. Just those simple lines gave Dennis so much joy. He was glad that Begotten was happy with how Geometric Lullaby was handling their releases. Dennis was nearly brought to tears. At this point in our story, it is the autumn of 2018. Dennis was yet to respond back to the email. The email was sort of final sounding, but of course, Dennis still had so many questions. At this time, Dennis wanted to take the next couple of weeks to figure out exactly what he wanted to respond with and how he wanted to say it. He was ready to continue keeping everyone updated on the situation, but thought it would be best to finally drop the fourth Begotten album in that October of 2018. Happy Anniversary seemed to be the true calm before the storm in the saga of events between Dennis and Begotten. It was as if the melancholy musical style from the album replicated the seemingly calm section of the timeline the two virtual pen pals found themselves in at this very moment. And while Dennis, yes, was relieved to finally hear back from Begotten, everything was still so odd. Any question Dennis had up until this point was still unanswered. Nothing was solidified, nothing declared, nor figured out. Dennis took this time to focus on the label, prepare that fourth begotten release, and just take the time he needed to figure out his next move with the unknown producer. So before we get into the fifth and sixth album, the two final releases from the Begotten series, and what ended up happening in the saga of events between Begotten and Dennis, I think it would be really fun to talk about this thing, the Begotten Halloween mixtape. Not only would it be fun to talk about, but it's also pretty important. Begotten and the story of Begotten has become sort of legend in the vaporwave scene, there's no doubt about that. With all of the mysterious uploads Bandcamp has for us waiting to discover, the Begotten releases are easily some of the most interesting and darkest material to dive into, and the Begotten Halloween mixtape showcases the fascination not only from the fans, but from fellow artists and producers as well. This thing is massive, especially when you compare it to any of the individual albums from Begotten. 20 tracks from some serious heavy hitters. You got Hantasy on here, Cat System Corp, Mindspring Memories, Desert Sand Feels Warm at Night, just to name a small handful. And some of these tracks are ridiculously long. You got the Mindspring Memories remix of Invisible clocking in at over 10 minutes, and Aliens remix of Love hits the 12 minute mark. What also makes this mixtape so much fun and such an incredible service to be gotten is that each artist brings their own flair and signature sound to the table, but at the same time they still pay respects to that begotten mood. Signal Wave legend Sport 3000 and his jolting take on Longing brings in an element of experimental and space exploration-esque synth work, all while still laying it on top of that classic ominous begotten drone. We even got the thunder from down under. You got the Future Funk Titan Tupperwave. Tupperwave is on this thing. <laughs> Giving Aquamarine a sort of lo-fi hip hop treatment. He keeps the entire track feeling like it's submerged in this sink full of ice cold water. A well done little tune and gives a great take on the begotten sound in just over a minute's worth of your time. And Winter Quilt's remix of Ghost. I ain't even gonna say anything, I'll just let you listen to that one for yourself. Dennis also got in on the fun as well, providing mastering for a handful of the tracks on here. The mixtape dropped seven months after the final release in the Begotten series, New Aura, which we will obviously be getting to very shortly, and this mixtape was the perfect treat for that Halloween season in October of 2019. The album dropped alongside that mouth-watering ghoul and ghost box set, a limited collector's edition release dropped by Geometric Lullaby that contains every begotten album, including the Halloween mixtape, and was just such a delightful way to pay respects to the entirety of the begotten story. But now, it's finally time to return back to where we left off. Let's rewind it back a year earlier, October of 2018. Begotten's fourth album, Happy Anniversary, had just made its way onto the Geometric Lullaby catalog, and around this time, the relationship between Begotten and Dennis almost seemed sort of finalized. But was it really though? Before that fourth release, just to quickly recap, Dennis had finally received an email from Begotten after such a long time of hearing nothing back from them at all. Dennis wondered if they were seeing the albums on Geometric Lullaby, the reception and how the albums quickly formed a sort of cult following, Dennis had no feedback from Begotten, which was unfortunate to him because all he wanted to know was what they thought of the releases. 
The email Dennis received at the time of the fourth upload was short and simple. Thank you, I am still alive, I am okay for now. Short, simple, sweet, and just enough to crack a smile on Dennis's face. Despite its seemingly conclusive nature, Dennis wanted to take a couple of weeks to figure out how he wanted to respond and how he wanted to say it. He promised those who visited the Bandcamp page for Happy Anniversary that he would keep them updated on the situation. Forgive and Forget stands out to me for many reasons. I would say that this is the most melodic and romantic sounding of the Begotten series. It uses mostly a different language, so the words themselves are impossible for me to understand. But the sound of the music does all of the work with this one. Somehow, Begotten still manages that eerie feeling, a pit in your stomach, just a seed of something off as you listen to this record. After Begotten had thanked Dennis in his quick email, Dennis was grateful to at least hear anything at all. After a couple of weeks, Dennis emailed Begotten back and thanked them for the submission and their music. He explained that people were really enjoying their releases and that they, Begotten, should be really proud. The email back would sprung up a conversation. While Dennis was not given any details about this person's whereabouts or who they actually were, they began describing to him the intense mental illness that they lived with. Dennis notes on his band camp that he actually holds a degree in psychology, so he understood plenty of what they explained. But something, like most things involving this artist, seemed odd. As Dennis would receive more emails, he was starting to get a feeling that he was not actually speaking with Begotten directly. It seemed as if he was messaging someone who spoke for them. A caretaker, perhaps? They spoke as though they'd studied the human psyche in depth and really knew the deepest feelings of Begotten. All of this was happening after the fourth release, obviously, and before the fifth release was put out on Geometric Lullaby. Dennis was in Europe at the time with his band on tour through Germany, admitting he was a bit distracted at the time due to the shows. A bit of time would pass without Dennis answering Begotten due to the lack of Wi-Fi and general busyness, and when he figured out how he would ask if it was someone speaking on Begotten's behalf, he would end up receiving one of the most disturbing emails yet. For the sake of YouTube, I'm not even really sure I can show what the email said. I will leave a link to the Bandcamp page for this release, as well as all the other releases I have discussed or will be discussing in this video. And obviously on the page for Forgive and Forget, that email is there. Just be advised, it is pretty morbid. Along with this email, however, there was also an attachment labeled me. It was a video. Dennis has yet to figure out what this video means, who it is, or what's going on in it. He uploaded the video to YouTube as an unlisted link through his Bandcamp page. If you click the link there, you will be able to check it out. Dennis wasn't sure if what was attached was some staged fake video. Was it taken from a movie or a TV show or even another YouTube video? He asked that if anyone recognizes it, let him know. The sound is unrecognizable, as is the individual in the video. With this latest intense email from Begotten, Dennis was once again going to take some time to figure out his next move. As time had passed since Happy Anniversary, Dennis thought now would be a good time to release the next album in the lineup given to him from the original Begotten email, as he once again found himself in a situation of email chess. Released on Christmas Eve, Forgive and Forget would be Geometric Lullaby's last gift for 2018. The release would contain nine tracks that all begin with Un except the bonus track. This is one of my favorite Begotten releases, an extremely emotional blend of wonderful vocal sample selections melted with a heavy pouring of warm production on top. That smoky Begotten texture is at an all-time high on here. The reverb and fogginess that lays over track three, Understanding, is like hot fudge melting through sweet vanilla ice cream. Track number seven, Undeserving, features the pendulum of a beautifully tragic crying vocal loop on one side with a lonely and distant horn sample on the other. And in the middle, an ice cold blast of trap percussion. That heavy hitting hi-hat frenzy is a brilliant surprise and provides some stellar contrast to the lost mood in the majority of the track. I think lost, is a good word to describe this album. It feels as if you're in a virtual world of wireframe filled hallways. Everything is black besides the thin purple lines that make up all of the wireframes. Track number five is a perfect example of this. Unending 
That constant echo effect used on the claps and other instrumentals really feel as if this thing is large and, like the name of the track, never ending. Unlike most releases that Begot and sent over to Dennis in that original email, Forgive and Forget would only feature one music video instead of the usual two. This music video came with track six, Unconditional, and who would have guessed it, more skeletons. This time though, maybe the worst quality footage yet. The barely visible and barely working video is more like a collection of photos instead of a smooth flowing video. We're simply given a skeleton dancing around, breaking down and building itself back up, all before breaking down one last time before the video ends. Here was the poem given with this release. Can I recognize feelings? Can I sense that they're there? Has all gone to numbness in place of despair? I can ask for forgiveness, but I know it will never come. I can wait until you forget, but there's no ridding of what's been done. A quote was also given along with the poem that simply read, tell me why. I kind of see this whole thing as putting on a face, while on the inside you can feel completely different. It's something we've seen come up time and time again with cases of severe mental illness, a person seeming happy and friendly on the outside while something is eating away at them on the inside. The album is like that. It hides away its thoughts and feelings through sound. The music given to us from Begotten is just a mask. A void is all that's left, no sanity to be found. I've lost my mind in the process. I can't distinguish any sounds. When there's nothing left to live for and you truly are at your last, you hate yourself thoroughly, solely dwell on the past. A new you starts emerging, something different, something clean, something desperate for anything other than a dream. But dreams are what I have, they beckon me with a demand. Let's hope my dreams never come true, for if they do, you'll know exactly who I am. This was the last and final poem sent to Dennis from Begotten. This, of course, coming along with the sixth album, New Aura. I knew this time would come. I had been waiting for it ever since releasing the very first Begotten cassette, and I must say, it is bittersweet. I am honored to have been chosen by this artist to present their work to the world. I am glad that so many have listened and enjoyed what they've created. While I know it's not for everyone, I personally find each album as something special, but you probably already know that by now. New Aura may be the most experimental release of the saga, and it seems fitting as this chaotic journey only seemed to get more and more bizarre along the way. It's as if the mask from the fifth album was ripped off and Begotten's thoughts, feelings, and emotions scattered into a thousand different directions with no destination in sight. The album pushes far the abstract and spacious sounds of darkness. New Aura plays with texture even more than the others. Tracks like Distill are straight up broken. Take the echo effects of the track we mentioned in the previous album, Unending, and turn it up to 100. Everything is crumbling here, instrumentals stepping on top of one another, a stampede of muddy sounds. However, towards the end, the only thing we are left with in that track is this eerie, unsettling howling that's laid over the congested mess of sounds. And we see this as the only tangible sound in other songs as well on this album. We see that on track number 10, Connectivity, which all feels like a missing no version of a Mallsoft track. You'll get it if you listen to it. Um, but once again, that horrifying vocal comes back to remind us we're just in Begotten's world. It's kind of like the same thing that happened in The Caretakers Everywhere at the End of Time, the final album in that series being the most broken and decayed release yet. Also, both projects have six releases in them, just kind of interesting to note. To Dennis, New Aura gives him feelings of otherworldliness, caverns, alien-like vibes, and pure insanity. The album feels like an emotion we can't fathom, only something that the set-specific person is coming from would understand. New Aura's 14 tracks clocks in at just under a half an hour, and here was the Chinese text that was provided by Begotten for this release. When translated, we find a detailed discussion on death, which leads into human transformation. It is also a bit confusing towards the end, which I'm sure is just Google Translate being Google Translate. This time, however, 
there were no music videos given at all. When I saw that there weren't any for the first time, I was a bit surprised. With a handful of videos and previous album releases, I was pretty sure there was going to be at least one that may answer some questions or give some closure to everything we've been going through with Begotten, but no, it's just 14 tracks. I think though this was a good move, and it kind of wraps up with the ending of the whole Dennis Begotten saga quite well, as you'll, uh, you'll see pretty soon. Upon the release of New Aura, Dennis was saddened that this would be the final piece. He knew not whether the world would ever see another album from Begotten, but he did not want to dwell on it being over. Dennis would have rather dwelled on the emotion and satisfaction that this music would provide. If you remember when Dennis released the fourth album, he stated that he had actually received another email from Begotten thanking him for doing their releases. At the time, he couldn't think of what he wanted to say in return. And Dennis admits on the Bandcamp page for New Aura that he kind of just rushed a reply in the end, asking who they were and some other personal questions. It wasn't until several weeks later, after all of the emails, that he received an answer to his questions. It read, Do you really want to know who I am? At first, Dennis was a little mad at this response. Why would I ask if I wasn't sure that I wanted to know who they were? But when I opened a reply email and began to type, I stopped myself. Did I really want to know? Would I be able to appreciate the music all the same? If I knew the name of the person behind it all, would it change anything? Dennis would take a few days to consider this. He knew he did not want to rush it. Whoever Begotten was, they had trusted him with their expression. They had trusted him with their art. Dennis recalls saying, would it be disrespectful to say that yes, in fact, I really wanted to know who they were? These things weighed heavily on my mind and I started to feel anxious about the entire situation. I stopped eating, I started sleeping longer each day and I began to have vivid dreams. It was impossible to tell how connected or not that all of this was to be gotten. In the end, after countless hours of balancing options in his head like placing coins on the plates of a scale, Dennis had finally come to a decision. He opened up an email with confidence and hit reply. In the body of the email, he simply wrote, you are begotten and that is all that matters to me. Thank you for trusting me. He hit send and smiled. He then played the entire discography from beginning to end closing his eyes and allowing it all to take him away. Dennis no longer checked his email, constantly refreshing in hopes of a message. He had finally found the closure he had been looking for. It was never about the person behind the music, but the feeling, emotion, and atmosphere. It was about the realms to which it brought him, allowing Dennis to escape his own life, if even for a moment. He could finally fully enjoy what he had been given. Dennis was finally at peace. So the tale of Begotten and Dennis's experience with the producer is a tale we all go through in this day and age with music. I know for myself and many others who are heavily involved in the vaporwave scene and community, there is a lot of music we love and adore from people we simply just do not know. As our scene in particular, it's really a, the best example I can personally think of, um, our scene as it's you know gotten closer these past couple of years with the live shows and online shows and whatnot, there was a time though before all this where everything was a bit more unknown. Artists and aliases being able to paint even more vivid imaginations in your head of who they were and what they were all about. It's easy to fall in love with narratives given with albums, artwork that helps you get to that set place and time the album seems like it would be in, but beyond the stories, beyond the settings, the most important thing will always be the music the sounds, which can always be experienced bare of any context. The ending may seem a bit uneventful. Um, I know for me it was a little bit of a surprise too when I read, you know, that final paragraph of it all. Nothing crazy happened in the end between Dennis and Begotten. Dennis was given this package of digital albums and just did what he thought was best with them. He never was able to find out if everything was a hoax or if this person was who they seemed to be. And in the end, he had the option to potentially figure it all out, but to Dennis, the music just seemed to be more important, plain and simple. Today, Begotten is still listened to by many throughout the internet, some claiming the mysterious producer to be their favorite vaporwave artist of all time. But what about our question? Is Begotten real? Fake? Is Dennis Begotten? You know what? I'll let you do your digging on that one. Sometimes a mystery is best kept a mystery. But as always, it's always up to you, my friend. If you haven't listened to the Begotten releases yet, I highly recommend doing so. The music is so rich with or without the pairing of the Begotten story, 
Everything is in the description of this video below for your listening pleasure. Also, please let me know of any other music mysteries or even urban legends you'd want me to explore on this channel in a future video. I always love hearing what you have to say, and I can't wait for our next deep dive into fascinating music. If you are interested in supporting the channel and getting a bunch of awesome and exclusive rewards, like our patron-exclusive Discord server Club Chennington, head on over to my Patreon page. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Thank you to everyone who has supported me through there. It really goes a long way with the channel. I just picked up a bunch of new audio equipment to record my scripts with, and that is all a big thank you to all of you. So yeah, thanks so much for the love and thanks for the support. Until next time, much love, your boy, Pad Chennington.